hey guys, I made this video, um, and unfortunately, because I don't make videos, the sound was really bad. So I'm just going to dub over it, and no great loss. I don't think I had anything particularly insightful to say the first time around, so here we go. Part 1 of the Miserocraft Survival 2 Tour. Now, let me just say, I'm making this really for myself, just so I can look back on it and go, hey, look, it's my stuff, good for Forrest, hey, happy, happy uh, day for me. Um, so it's going to really focus on my stuff, it's going to have less of uh, everyone else's stuff, because, you know, again, it's just like the equivalent of me going up to everything and screenshotting it. But if you if you like it and, and uh, you want to watch it, hey, good for you. I mean, I'm not going to ignore other things, but I'm just going to make sure I hit all of my stuff on the way. Now, this is the map. I think making the map was a really good call. Um, it definitely motivated me to build a lot more. Um, I certainly ended up like building things to put, you know, building things just to kind of fill out the map, which I enjoyed. Maybe that's a bad thing, but I mean, we didn't run out of space, so I guess it wasn't that bad. Now we're going by the harbor with all the boats. That one over there is the the royal yacht I made. It was based on a uh, the royal yacht from the or the British royal families, which is, I think, I, don't, I think no longer used, but I think I was watching The Crown at the time. Here I steal some fireworks from my firework trap and just use them as rockets. They, of course, do hurt me, but, you know, can't be worried about the little stuff. And this is a nice little yacht. Um, I used a lot of, ter of uh, not terracotta, excuse me, lapis in it. Um, but, you know, it doesn't really do anything, there's no stores there. But if you go down here, there's a little fun space, which never really got used, but certainly looks interesting. Yeah, it's there. It's part of the regatta we have, the little fleet we have in front of Survival 2. And up there is the Zeppelin I made, which is quite large and also, again, a little bit empty. But that's to be expected, it is a Zeppelin. It's very little actual useful space on a Zeppelin. And yeah, I was quite pleased with it. It was called the Beeliner. Really pretty in yellow. Loved it. Down to the left there was the Flying Fox. That was really impressive. Winnie made that for House Fox Meadow. And here's another ship I made, which I guess I'll quickly fly by, and I don't believe I get on. There's also the submarine. We'll get more. We'll see more of the submarine a little bit later. All right, coming to land. I never did get a trident. <laughs> All right, so now we're coming into some buildings I made. This is the uh, like survival to Department of Transportation. It's kind of a generic government building style building. We go down here. There are some offices to conduct business in, and yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. It's just a nice little building. Right next to it is a building, which I'm, I'm really quite happy with, though. This is a spawn tower. Um, it's one of the larger buildings, one of the taller buildings I did, and I think one of the better ones as well. I'll take some elevators up. <laughs> There's a lot of floors. These, they're all for, for lease. I was, I was renting out floors uh, basically as an excuse to, you know, justify all the buildings I was making, because I really do enjoy building, and the way I saw it, you know, a lot of people don't enjoy building, hey, I'll build for them. And here's the penthouse. But uh, unfortunately, most floors were not filled up. They remained empty because it was <laughs> built, and then the server will be, of course, ending pretty soon. Now we're flying into the ocean market, which is a really nice area. I love how built up it is. It feels like a, like a very, like, organic but dense city, which is nice. Before we get into that, let's check out the little sewer area I made in the canal. And now there's the entrance to the main sewer. We're not going to go all the way through it because it's very dark and a little boring, but there is a large sewer to go through. Boros helped a lot with that sewer. It's actually quite the, quite the expenditure of effort. A little fish store made in the sewers. All, all the sewer stuff I built before, I was a very confident builder. I hadn't played Minecraft in a while. Um, there's a little fish tank I built down there, which is a fun little hidden garden. So it's all pretty primitive built, or kind of supposed to look primitive, but it doesn't make, change the fact that they are quite primitive. Here's one of the many secret entrances to the Thieves Guild. I had a lot of fun building that, and it became a became a fun little like recurring bit on the server. There, this was the first entrance in, but there were, you know, you can see there's several that were built to various other areas of the island, so you can get in and be quite sneaky. So here's another exit. This was another exit I put in that went out to the sewer, and again, we're not going to go all the way out into the sewer because I don't think it'll be very interesting. In fact, I know it won't be very interesting. I made it all dark and moody and still hard to get through, so it'll be funny. And I still think it's funny. But it is inconvenient. So instead, we'll go out in this nice well exit someone made. It's really just a nice area. 
I, I really enjoy how built up it became and all, all the buildings just crammed in next to each other. Apparently all I wanted out of Minecraft was a city simulator. Alright, now we're coming up on the banner store. And this was a shop I made to sell banners. It's made in the same style as, as most of my base, um, which is a very kind of, you know, primitive style for me. Not as primitive as the sewer stuff, certainly, but it's something I'd kind of move past. But I think it's nice. There's some other stuff upstairs, but it's hardly worth getting into. And if we come up here, we'll see this large Art Deco. Well, not super large. Uh, we'll see this uh, little Art Deco little uh, building I made. I wouldn't call it a skyscraper. Maybe it's more of a, well, I don't know, <laughs> not a tenement either. But, well, it's it's not small, but it's not big. I I don't know how I feel about this one. It, it had some stuff that was interesting. In other, in other ways, it was kind of a letdown. Um, I don't know. It turned out okay. The Endermen certainly like it. I think it added to the, the skyline and nothing else. And here's the penthouse, which is currently occupied by... Uh, uh, two vagrants, it seems, and we'll just we'll just leave them to it. It's really not worth our worth our time to fight them. Classic runaway strats. That's the little mage building to our left, and here we have the Prefontaine uh, Fox Meadow Alliance Hall. Now this building is just kind of a nice, like almost like a venue space, and it was. I built it because I, I just discovered uh, glazed terracotta, so I really like the interior of that dome. There's a fish tank, of course, and there's about 25 diamond blocks embedded in the decorations. Um, not quite sure why I did that, and maybe it was a little wasteful, but I think it had a nice little effect. You can tell I built this pretty early on because, oh, <laughs> okay, well, I'll be fighting that event for five minutes now. But also you can tell I built it quite early on because I don't really double layer the wall. It's the same granite you see on the outside. and the, the granite uh, walls kind of give it a nice, like, textured effect, but it's maybe a little, not quite how I would have done it now. But I think it's still nice. I think the checkered floors and the and the tiered of, and the tiered um, layers are very effective. I like this building. I think it's good. This is, this is turning into forest rates, all of his buildings. Which is good, actually, because I think the next building is one I'm going to rate very highly. It's one I'm very fond of. It's when I started building tall. Gosh, is that Enderman? Unfortunately, I can tell the quality of the recording is quite low. I'm, I'm doing this with no equipment at all. Well, that's life. It's quite jerky. Eh, that's fine. Maybe it'll be doubly jerky since I'm literally recording over recording. Best not to dwell on it. Here's an arcade which is built in this, uh, on this floor. There's a creeper enjoying it currently. And these are the floors for lease. That arcade actually was uh, leased out. And if I say lease, it was, it was permanent. I'm not actually, I made a lot of jokes about like uh, financial uh, <laughs> crimes and uh, shady practices, but in practice, I actually wanted everyone to be able to use what I made and not like have a miserable time. But funny jokes. This was before I realized I should always have an express elevator as well. Learned a lot building on the server. A lot of memories. Now I think we're going to come up to the arena. This was all sandstone. And uh, it took, certainly took a lot of sandstone. Al helped me with it. He helped. He did all the redstone. Um, I did not realize until I built it how much sandstone I was a pain to get. Especially in a world with no desert. But I think it came out pretty interesting. It has like a, you know, I, I tried to make it very coliseum me as much as I could. Um, well, not being completely derivative. It's an interesting style. It's not something I would, I would uh, really replicate again. Uh, but I, I did kind of learn every way to use sandstone in that building, and that was really helpful because I would use it. I would use the sandstone later. We're going up to the cartography guild. We're going past the Odegon space to go there. Now this build, I, I kind of tried to make it like Babylonian ruins. I love the red sandstone, but a horrible, horrible pain to get. And I tried to make it like Babylonian ruins, and then it kind of turned into almost like a pagoda thing, and that's fine. I think it's a it's a interesting building, a real mishma mishmash of styles. And here's the large map of the island and also the surrounding environs. 
Now you can uh, we'll get a look at that. Not too much of a look. Oh, no, 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 no. Past me apparently will give us a closer look. Nice of him. There's going to be a large underground vault which had a, held a larger version, which would be on the floor. And I believe that, uh, although some read some linen, I don't believe that was ever finished, unfortunately. It's going to be a lot of projects that are finished uh, in... Uh, <laughs> that are declared finished, although maybe they aren't quite finished, or are completely unfinished due to the unfortunate ending of the server, which is a shame, but, you know, I was probably going to burn out on Minecraft anyway. And also, I mean, hey, uh, it is, uh, there is a new update. Oh, the three best friends in the whole world over there. Now I'm kind of heading towards my base. Or at least the, the core of my base. This is the little uh, flower field I, bu I built for bees. Now, when I built this, it was completely surrounded by trees, just trees in every direction. Obviously, it's no longer the case. Things have uh, really grown up around it. But I just made a little uh, bee area out in the middle of uh, nowhere, and now, now it looks like that. <laughs> Which is fun. I love how urban things became. Now, here's the Mead Hall. I built this after I... Uh, after I uh, built the little uh, bee area, and it kind of became my base. I don't think I ever actually sold a single bottle of mead from it. There's a statue. There used to be a lot more, and but creepers took their toll. And there's four pod Johnny and my dog, who does not have a name, so let's just call him Dog. And the bed, I, which I probably passed like 2,000 nights in. Storage. This was going to be part of a... Oh, it was going to be part of like a server-wide scavenger hunt. There are going to be more gems. Unfortunately, I think it'll just be the one. Then I have like uh, some banners for in case I need to dupe them, and uh, the Magician's Guild hat, and oh, the the ring Warrose gave me, and then this little, this nice little room, which gives a good view of the of the estate. Head back down to the storage. Now you can see I built, oh, there's a lot of ponds. I, I do like putting fish in Minecraft. So there's a lot of ponds and uh, a lot of farms in the area. Gosh, this video is quite jerky. You know, that's to be expected. It really is quite a non-professional recording system I got here. That's fine. We go up to the Hall of Banners. And this is where the great houses of the server would declare themselves and, you know, put in their their uh, their banners and their mottos and such. It was, that was a good, uh, it was good fun. Go by the sunflower fields and go to the blue basilica. I made this so that uh, Warros and I could use the marriage plugin. I built it. I based it off of a Moorish architecture, so it has this really nice courtyard. I love the courtyard. I think it's really well done. Um, the upper floors I don't like as much. I think I could have put more of an arch in the windows. That's okay. It, it still turned out pretty good. I really can't complain. I, I, I do just I think the courtyard with the red sand I think I think that's very good I think that was I think that was effective okay well it looks like that's the end of part one I know this video is uh again it's not super high quality um, but again most of making it for myself and I'm hoping that uh, you know I'm just putting it on YouTube and showing it to the rest of the measers I hope any of the measers who watch it get something out of it as well all right see you in part two